we're gonna learn the song I wrote called Buried, and it's the acoustic guitar part, and it's gonna sound like this. So it's, uh, I think it's a pretty fun song to play, and it's cool. It's in 6-8, which is essentially the same as 3-4. It's like a waltz, right? And uh, it's got kind of an interesting pattern that maybe makes it seem like it's in a, a more unique time signature just because of the way it's kind of swung. So I'm going to play it with a pick. In the video, I'm doing it finger style, but actually on the recording, it's doubled up. So it's one guitar being picked and one guitar being finger style. Just kind of like a, a reference for how the difference is. So finger style would be like... And picked is. So basically, the pick offers more of an attack. And I think when you kind of blend them together in a recording, uh, it has kind of like a cool effect. And it almost seems like a chorus reverby type thing uh, together if it's tight enough. And I just kind of like the way it sounded. That's why I did it. Now I've got a capo on the third fret. And you can play this without a capo. But I think one of the things I want to talk about is when you can use a capo. Aside from just changing the key of a song uh, just by moving open chords around. And I think this can be an example of that, which we're going to get to in a minute. But first of all, we're going to start with uh, the main riff. So we're going to start on the D string, the 15th fret. So this should be the first dot after your double dot uh, octave, depending on how your inlays work. The middle finger right here. This is an F note. This is in the key of F. Uh, major third up from here, major third. One, two, three in the major scale, all right? So that's an A. And then we're gonna add that right there, okay? So now this note is an E. So I have an F, an A, and E. So this kind of combines to make like an F major seven uh, voicing, right? We're implying that the C, there's no C in there, but we're gonna go back and forth from F, A, E, A. So it's kind of like an arpeggio up and down, right? But it's back and forth and back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. So it's kind of swung a little way. So really, just the, the spacing of the notes is probably the thing that gives it, uh, it its timing, right? It's kind of got a longer root note. And then that kind of like rhythm is carried out throughout the song. So the next shape we're going to go to, we're going to root two frets back, which is 13 on the D string. And we're going to make this shape right here. Now, this is really, think of this as like a D major shape up a string. So we have 13D, 14G, 13B. And we're going to pick it the exact same way. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take your pointer finger and pop it back one fret onto a D. Just like that. And then we're going to come back to what will be, I mean, Technically, this is the eighth fret. I'm saying the frets not in relation to the capo because I think it's easier to do uh, when you're down farther on the neck. But this is where the capo kind of comes into play, right? So I'm anchoring down here on the eighth fret of the D string, making a power chord, 10th fret of G, pinky right behind it, right? So here's my new chord. And then I'm opening it up, right? So this is one reason I have the capo because I kind of wanted the sustain of the D string. Now I can play this without a capo. I can actually just go up. When I'm opening the string up, what I'm really getting is another F, right? Which is the, it would be the open or the third string, the third fret on the D string. I can do that same thing by going up a string. So I could play it like, But I like having that kind of droning F note because it's in the key of F, so it's kind of like. You notice there's like a, there's a presence that it adds, so that's why I kind of like playing it uh, with the capo on here, right? Another thing you might notice is it has a cutaway, right? It's kind of a, it would be a lot harder to play if you didn't have a cutaway here. But there are always way there are almost always ways around that. Like I could play this right here. And the next chord would be you. So, you know, there are ways around it. It just depends on the chord voicings you use and stuff like that, right? So, basically, after this one right here, open, we're gonna go to the C 
sixth fret on the A string or the third fret away from your capo, right? And then our new voicing is gonna be here. Here's where the stretch is, right? So I've got uh, six A. I'm getting the octave right here with my ring on the G string. And then my pinky is actually going another two frets to pick up that D, the 10th fret of the high E string. So I've got a... Now this could be a really good picking exercise just to kind of skip strings. A, G, E, G, A, G, E, A, G, E, G, A, G, E. Then after that, pointer finger is gonna lead you back to that same thing we did that we opened up, right? So all together, do the whole thing. Point your finger back. Get to the string there. Open the reach. Back to where you were. Into the next part. Not the next part, but the same part again, right? So that's what I would consider the main riff or the verse of the song, right? Now what that leads us into, uh, so let's take it from the reach one. This is where kind of like the chords come into it, right? So this is uh, technically, it's a D minor seven. Uh, it would be a B minor seven if you're thinking capo wise, right? Which is confusing kind of talking about it with capo, without a capo, whatever. But uh, yeah. So if uh, my pointer finger is rooted on the D, the fifth fret, or the th second fret in relation to the capo, why am I still relating to the capo or not? I don't know, I should probably just pick one and stick with it. But uh, minor seven voicing, so regular chord, minor seven, you pick that pinky up, and it's very important that we pick the pinky up because we have to... What I'm doing here, I'm kind of like mimicking what my voice is doing. I'm kind of trying to add uh, a melody thing. Like it's a... Uh... I swore that I found every floor to fall through. So I'm kind of doing like a... With, uh, with what my voice is doing. So I'm kind of trying to match it. I'm adding a melody to a chord. So there's the first one. My pinky's going to the B string, which is on the A fret. And then I'm going to where I'm kind of hitting the, where my middle finger is a little bit harder. And this is kind of like a good lesson in how you can kind of embellish the melody within a chord, right? I'm not playing it like. I can hear that those are, you know, different chords, but if I'm playing it softer, I can kind of focus on the note that I want. Right, I'm kind of hearing the within a chord. And all that is is just kind of focusing your pick or your finger or whatever over where you are and then hitting it a little harder, giving it a little more juice. Like right now my pinky, if I want that note, if I want this note to stick out within this chord, I stop my strum where this is gonna be the highest note. So I'm not getting all five strings or six strings every time. Okay, so that's the D minor seven. And then I'm gonna go to this major seven voicing right here, <clears throat> which is just open D, and then the second fret all the way down, right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing melody-wise on top of this chord. Pinky and middle. And I think that's like a really cool thing, and you hear this in a ton of songs where maybe the chord changes, but the melody stays the same if the melody is Chord, a different chord with the same melody into a G. So this is a G major seven voicing under the capo. My middle finger would be on the third fret of the E string. Everything is open until my ring finger on the third fret of the B string. And then my pointer finger is grabbing the, ma the seven, the major seven from that. And then I'm opening it up too. So now I'm getting the open E string. So B minor seven with the melody, and the D major seven with its melody, and the G major.
major 7, and then G major 7, open. G major 7 with the open E. Now, after this, we go to like the next part, which a lot of people consider a key change. I just kind of think of them as chromatically descending arpeggios. It sounds like this. bass and the electric guitar going like but uh anyways if you want to learn like the bass part or the electric part all it is is a root note sliding down three frets a minor third to its fifth to its octave so it's really a simple minor triad is doing another guitar is doing it an octave higher right so you know compositionally it's not that complex of a thing it's just a, a major voicing I'm putting a major seven voicing on top of this which this would uh, be so my middle finger is on the ninth fret of the E string skipping the A string not hearing it muting it ring finger pinky all on the ninth fret Now the strumming, again, it's in six, right? One, two, and three, and four, five, six. One, two, and three, and four, five, six. And I'm kind of accenting the off beats, which, make, which might make it seem like a, a more complex time signature. And then I just go back a fret. I walk it down chromatically, just mean back one. And then into this. Another major seven voicing. Oh my gosh, I turned everything into a major seven chord. So all it is, it's actually kind of an easy one. You just uh, root right here on the eighth fret of the D string. And then uh, your ring finger or pinky or whatever is gonna take care of the rest of the strings on the bottom on the 10th fret. So it's. And then the next time I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop it up into this and get the bottom three strings. So now it's 10, 10, eight on the bottom. So if you notice, I'm still maintaining the integrity of the rhythm, but in a strummed way. Even though it's in a different kind of kind of key or something, technically, it kind of has the essence. So I think, I think that's what kind of makes it go together a little bit, right? So again, I'll kind of do the whole thing again, but uh, after the so, Back to a fret, into this next major seven voicing, into this one. And then the second time it's back to this minor seven voicing, back a fret, now on the eighth fret. Now this is the last time around here. And then. So that one is kind of like a fun one to play, right? So it's really the same voicing that we just did. All it is is that same voicing, that major seven voicing. I'm gonna pick the D, G, D, B, right? Bum, 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 bum. D, G, D, B, D. Rake down. Now when I say rake, basically I'm just kind of like coming down with my pick all the way down through the 10th fret. This is kind of like a cool thing you can get going. I mean, it's not really like sweet picking, but it's kind of the same concept. So, uh, D, G, D, B, rake, to accent the E, back a fret, or back two frets, up a string, back to the eighth fret. So, a lot of vibrato on that last note. One, two, three, four, five, six, back to the start. Okay? So, well, kind of a lot of stuff going on. Again, not the most, uh, the craziest song in the world, but I think it's a fun one to play. Uh, really, I didn't, I wasn't thinking of the chords at all for this. This is an example of my ear completely leading the way 100%. I didn't even know that this was in the key of F when I started. Uh, I think 
Later, I'll probably do like an acoustic, an acoustic version of the whole song, like singer songwriting style, because I play it a little bit differently when it's just me by myself. Uh, I don't kind of do this the whole time because you know, it doesn't really fill out the whole spectrum as well, maybe. But yeah, basically, let's go through the whole, th whole thing again really quick. The main riff, right? So again, middle finger, thinking of a major seven chord voicing on the D string 15th fret. that root note back, back to here, open it up, the reach, and then back to where you came from. And then you do that twice, and then after that you switch to the chords. G major 7, open it up. G major 7, and open it up, do that again. Then in my minor 7, walk it back one fret into these other major 7 voicings. Back to the minor 7 chord. Six back. Now the other interesting thing about this is the second time over the chords. What I consider my favorite part of the whole song is when the acoustic guitar goes to the, the D minor, B minor 7, however you want to look at it, right? The intro riff is played on the electric guitar over the chords, right? So this interest, this, uh, what, however you want to look at it, this F major 7 riff is being played over a D minor 7 with the melody still. And it kind of creates this, I don't know, to, to me it's just like, it creates like a, like a, a musical moment that, I, that I, I think is something that's like really beautiful. And I think just writing wise is, you know, you never know when you're going to have moments like that where I, you know, I didn't even, I didn't write it thinking I was going to do that. But I was just like jamming on that riff, and then I went to those chords, and I had it looped, and then I played the verse riff over the chorus chords, and something, you know, I, I, I think sounded pretty cool. And I didn't plan it, this is one of those things that happens. Music theory-wise, it didn't even make sense to me, whatever, but it sounded pretty cool. And then, you know, the, that kind of riff, I went through the whole chord progression, and then just played this over the first chord, and then kept going through stopped here and I just stayed here through the rest of the chord progression because if I kept going to this it would it would have clashed a little too much so a little bit of clashing I think is good in music in your arrangements again this is my own personal opinion whatever you can do whatever you want but I think it's just a lesson of uh, how you can use different chord voicings over maybe stuff that that shouldn't fit and sometimes it sounds pretty cool right so definitely uh, check out Check out the song and the music video uh, if you haven't already. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. But that is essentially how you play the acoustic guitar part for the song.